should I read systemic pathology in second year of MBBS? Honestly speaking, I'm going to talk about how to read systemic pathology in second year of MBBS. The answer for should I? Yes, obviously yes, right? Systemic pathology is very, very vast. I'm not able to complete. I started with liver. I'm still struggling with liver. Kidney is even more difficult. Heart, I don't even know what is there. It's very vast, right? Hello guys, welcome back to PW Meta channel once again. So the heading was, should I read systemic pathology in second year of MBBS? Honestly speaking, I'm going to talk about how to read systemic pathology in second year of MBBS. The answer for should I? Yes, obviously yes, right? That's kind of a clickbait so that you'll come here and you'll watch and let's discuss more things together, right? Jokes apart. Uh, so I'm Dr. Anjit. So coming back to the main topic. So how to or should I read systemic pathology in second year of MBBS? If you have been into six or eight months in second year, or if you have completed your second year or in your third or fourth year, I'm sure you must, you will remember and you must have gone through this phase. Systemic pathology is very, very vast. I'm not able to complete. I started with liver. I'm still struggling with liver. Kidney is even more difficult. Heart, I don't even know what is there. It's very vast, right? So why is systemic pathology kept there? And why did your CBMA curriculum kind of removed many topics and in, given importance to only few topics, right? That's what we're going to discuss here. See, the curriculum is spaced such that the systemic pathology reading will start mostly in the second half of the second year, right? So there's always, you must have heard this, your senior or your professor in your college say that you need to integrate, you need to apply. Reading alone is not enough, right? Theoretical reading is not going to take me anywhere. You need to apply that. The application starts from systemic pathology. The entire word of integration is going to start from systemic pathology, right? That's why it's always this time that I have to read that in the second half of MBBS. So what do I do in first half? I do read general pathology. Let's assume, for example, I learned about inflammation. I will read about viral hepatitis, inflammation. I learned about necrosis. I will read about hepatic failure, necrosis. I learned about wound healing, fibrosis. I learned about cirrhosis, application. This is theoretical application. So what is more important for me is practical application. That's why we had your clinical postings in the morning of the second day of MPPS. So what you do here is, let's say that you saw a patient with ascites and a liver failure. I'm sure you must have seen if you have gone through your medicine posting. Or let's take breast cancer. You've seen a patient with breast cancer in surgical posting. So I saw a patient with breast cancer. I know how the examination is. I know how the swelling is firm, irregular. You read in breast pathology, why firm and why irregular? And in neoplasia, we must have read about desmoplasia, right? So theoretical application comes in systemic pathology as well as the practical application comes in systemic pathology. So systemic pathology is an amalgamation. If you have missed your clinical postings, you might not feel the essence of systemic pathology. That's the most important thing or the starting point for your integration, right? So if you have to excel in MBBS, Start the integration early and the course has given you a beautiful way to start it. See a patient with thyroid cancer, look at the Robbins pathology, look at the microscopy, look how the description of the patient is there below the microscopy in Robbins or in any one of the lectures and then go back the second day, attend one, definitely you will see more than one patient with thyroid cancer uh, in your surgical posting, right? So see that, is whatever I'm reading, is it applicable there? If it's applicable, mark that point revise it never leave it if something is not applicable very very theoretical you actually know what to ignore also that's what i said this is the most important and one of the beautiful place where you can actually move from a student and feel yourself and start feeling and start reading yourself towards a goal of a doctor right so if you read a theory of 10 pages of any cancer you know that by default if you've seen patients in the first six months you know that by default in these 10 pages these are things which is not required at all. For example, mutations in case of a thyroid cancer. You must have seen patients treated, diagnosed of thyroid cancer, maybe sometime kind of gotten rid of the disease also without analyzing the mutation. So which means it's not required for me. You must have seen patients with liver cirrhosis and they'll be talking about stellate cells, ito cells. I do require them, but not required practically for me. You must have learned about the alcohol in your alcoholic cirrhosis. When you go to the history taking, you need to know that which brand of alcohol, how much percentage of alcohol, everything is important, right? So you know where to emphasize more, where to read as such, where to ignore the points, right? So 10 page of theory is not going to be applicable. This systemic pathology combined with your clinical postings will make sure that 10 pages of whatever you read, what is useful, where I have to more, push more focus on the coming years of MBBS, 
and to practice as a doctor and what to ignore which is more theoretical is not going to be helpful for me right so that's why systemic pathology is important and robins is vast i do agree that because robins takes care of like five ten systems of systemic pathology which everything is specialization oh, your breast you have breast surgeon specialist your ovary your endometrium gynecology are there bone soft tissue orthopedicians are there right ent i there are specialists there so everything what a specialist is required is being condensed in the 20 30 pages hepatology is a subdivision nephrology is a subdivision right so that's why it becomes a little bit more hectic but if you have taken the essence of the first half of clinical medicine try to correlate them in our lectures we are going to do that basic things that's how systemic pathology is at the same time when in the second half of systemic pathology lectures in your colleges you also must have known little bit about pharmacology so it makes the complete circle right so systemic pathology is something is going to make the entire reading conceptual more applicable than just theoretical so please don't lose that right i'm here always for you guys and if at all if you have any doubts any time in future you can ping any one of our lectures or any one of the teachers you follow please don't leave them when you go to clinics go and ask them sir or ma'am i didn't read this yesterday why i'm not doing that ask questions sometimes they might get irritated don't worry about it they'll definitely answer because any teacher would love a student who's enthusiastic and is going to ask questions as more because you are very young you are very early you and you are okay to make mistakes this time when you become 10 years in mbbs or like me you become old making mistakes will be shun at right uh, this guy is making mistake but here no one is going to doubt about you it's completely fine to make a mistake be curious be foolish ask more and more and more questions and make sure you take the last inch of knowledge which is available every professor you touch right so see you in the next video till then bye bye from dr anjit and if you've had some nightmares on how to read systemic pathology put it in the comment section let's discuss a healthy discussion always gives a good new point for us right see you soon bye bye